In the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the exiles by the river Chibar, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiakim, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Chibar, and the hand of the Lord was upon him there. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness round about it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire, as it were gleaming bronze. And from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the form of men, but each had four faces, and each of them had four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like burnished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands, and the four had their faces and their wings thus. Their wings touched one another. They went every one straight forward, without turning as they went. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man in front. The four had the face of a lion on the right side. The four had the face of an ox on the left side. And the four had the face of an eagle at the back. Such were their faces. And their wings were spread out above. Each creature had two wings, each of which touched the wing of another, while two covered their bodies. And each went straight forward wherever the spirit would go, they went, without turning as they went. In the midst of the living creatures, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches moving back and forth among the living creatures. And the fires were bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and the living creatures darted back and forth like a flash of lightning. Now as I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel upon the earth beside the living creatures, one for each of the four of them. As for the appearance of the wheels and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of a chrysolite, and the four had the same likeness, their construction being, as it were, a wheel within a wheel. When they went, they went in any of their four directions without turning as they went. The four wheels had rims, and they had spokes, and their rims were full of eyes round about. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them, and when the living creatures rose from the earth, the wheels rose. Whenever the spirit would go, they went. And the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those rose from the earth, the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Over the heads of the living creatures there was the likeness of a firmament, shining like crystal, spreading out above their heads. And under the firmament, their wings were stretched out straight, one toward another, and each creature had two wings covering its body. And when they went, I heard the sound of their wings like the sound of many waters, like the thunder of the Almighty, a sound of tumult, like the sound of a host. When they stood still, they let down their wings. And there came a voice from above the firmament over their heads. When they stood still, they let down their wings. And above the firmament over their heads there was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne was a likeness as in, as it were, of a human form. And upward from what had the appearance of his loins I saw, as it were gleaming bronze, like the appearance of fire enclosed round about, and downward from what had the appearance of his loins I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire and there was brightness round about him, like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord, and when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard the voice of one speaking. And he said to me, Son of man, stand upon your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the sons of Israel, to a nation of rebels, who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The people also are impudent and stubborn. 
I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that there has been a prophet among them. And you, son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you sit upon scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Be not rebellious like the rebellious house. Open your mouth, and eat what I give you. And when I looked, behold, a hand was stretched out to me, and behold, a written scroll was in it, and he spread it before me, and it had writing on the front and on the back, and there were written on it words of lamentation and mourning and woe. Do not contend with a powerful man, lest you fall into his hands. Do not quarrel with a rich man, lest his resources outweigh yours. For gold has ruined many, and has perverted the minds of kings. Do not argue with a chatterer, nor heap wood on his fire. Do not jest with an ill-bred person, lest your ancestors be disgraced. Do not reproach a man who is turning away from sin. Remember that we all deserve punishment. Do not disdain a man when he is old, for some of us are growing old. Do not rejoice over anyone's death. Remember that we all must die. Do not slight the discourse of the sages, but busy yourself with their maxims, because from them you will gain instruction and learn how to serve great men. Do not disregard the discourse of the aged, for they themselves learn from their fathers, because from them you will gain understanding and learn how to give an answer in time of need. Do not kindle the coals of a sinner, lest you be burned in his flaming fire. Do not get up and leave an insolent fellow, lest he lie in ambush against your words. Do not lend to a man who is stronger than you, but if you do lend anything, be as one who has lost it. Do not give surety beyond your means, but if you give surety, be concerned as one who must pay. Do not go to law against the judge, for the decision will favor him because of his standing. Do not travel on the road with a foolhardy fellow, lest he be burdensome to you, for he will act as he pleases and through his folly you will perish with him. Do not fight with a wrathful man, and do not cross the wilderness with him, because blood is as nothing in his sight, and where no help is at hand, he will strike you down. Do not consult with a fool, for he will not be able to keep a secret. In the presence of a stranger, do nothing that is to be kept secret, for you do not know what he will divulge. Do not reveal your thoughts to everyone, lest you drive away your good luck. Do not be jealous of the wife of your bosom, and do not teach her an evil lesson to your own hurt. Do not give yourself to a woman so that she gains the mastery over your strength. Do not go to meet a loose woman, lest you fall into her snares. Do not associate with a woman singer, lest you be caught in her int intrigues. Do not look intently at a virgin lest you stumble and incur penalties for her. Do not give yourself to harlots, lest you lose your inheritance. Do not look around in the streets of a city, nor wander about in its deserted sections. Turn away your eyes from a shapely woman, and do not look intently at beauty belonging to another. Many have been misled by a woman's beauty, and by it passion is kindled like a fire. Never dine with another man's wife, nor revel with her at wine, lest your heart turn aside to her, and in blood you be plunged into destruction. Forsake not an old friend, for a new one does not compare with him. A new friend is like new wine. When it has aged, you will drink it with pleasure. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. 
Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing. So among yourselves, from the day you heard and understood the grace of God in truth, as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, to lead a life worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or principalities or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body and the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who once were estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue in the faith stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which has been preached to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. In the first chapter of Ezekiel, the prophet receives one of the most intense visions of God found in all of scripture. In the vision of the wheeled chariot, covered in eyes, never turning direction, and yet always moving forward, we glimpse the omnipotent, omniscient God who was nevertheless still beyond Ezekiel's sight. The prophet sees only the likeness of the glory of the Lord. The vision is said to reveal merely the likeness of God's glory because God is transcendent beyond the physical world in all our imagining, which is why the figure representing God appears above the firmament in the dome of the sky. Truly, this is the God of whom St. Paul speaks, the creator of all, the one in whom all things hold together. But where is Ezekiel when he is given the me this message? Ezekiel is in exile in Babylon. Although God's house has been destroyed, God has no trouble making his presence known. The vision is therefore a powerful reminder of the character of our God. He is a God who is both completely magnificent and transcendent, yet also mobile and present. Have you ever experienced God's presence as both beyond you and yet near you at the same time? 